it's time for another edition of the Collector's Corner. Aloha. It's your favorite friend with questionable character. Aloha, Mr. Han here with another edition of the Aloha Collector's Corner. I am recording this on April 8th, 2024. April 8th is a significant date in baseball history because today is the 50th anniversary of, and I quote, there's a new home run king and it's Henry Aaron. That's right. Hank Aaron hit home run number 715 in Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Boy, that's a mouthful. On this day 50 years ago. Al Downing was the pitcher as they were playing the Los Angeles Dodgers. That's why you get the Vin Scully uh, announcing of it as well. It was a nationally broadcast game. Kirk Gowdy was doing the NBC feed. And you had Atlanta with, oh God, what's his name? Uh, God, I can't think of the announcer's name. but And Vin Scully with the Dodgers. Uh, Milo Hamilton was with the Braves. It was Milo Hamilton. All of them in the Hall of Fame. But, uh, you know, you hear each broadcast. Each broadcast is great on its own merits because they did bring different perspectives. The one perspective, I think, obviously, it's there's a no, new home run king of all time, and it's Henry Aaron. That is from Milo Hamilton. Vin Scully gives a great interlude about a black man being getting a standing ovation in the Deep South uh, after he hits the home run. I recommend you go watch each of the audio, each of the videos with the different commentators making their commentary about the home run. Uh, Tom House was the pitcher who caught the ball. Uh, they had the, the Braves had staked out positions in the uh, in left field in the bullpen uh, trying to catch the ball, and House had... I believe it was Tom House, let me rephrase that, uh, had one of the less enviable positions based on uh, what we would now call Hank Aaron's spray chart for home runs. But And then, of course, you had the fa the two fans run up uh, as he's rounding second, be as he's between second and third run up and pat him on the back and everything else. If you really think about it in the time, that's a scary situation because you don't know if, if you got the Lagoo brothers or what, but... It's obviously a historic moment in baseball history. And for those who do not know, today, as a matter of fact, the Hall of Fame announced that there will be a Hank Aaron statue um, put on display in the Hall of Fame. I believe it's going to be in the plaque gallery because they said it's on the first floor. So I would imagine it go with the statues of Ted Williams and Babe Ruth. Uh Memorial Day weekend in conjunction with the uh, new black baseball exhibit. So I urge anyone and everyone to get out there and check it out because it's well, it'll be well worth it. Um, just on a side note, off the record, your boy may have helped a little bit on that. So don't tell no one. But uh, being what today is, I had to share some Hank Aaron memorabilia. And one other thing I have to say before I share the memorabilia is I had the great opportunity to talk to the man who was in the on-deck circle when Hank Aaron hit that home run. A man who is not in the Hall of Fame yet, but will be. And you saw his picture. Hopefully I remembered to post it after I make this. Uh, me with him. That's right. Dusty Baker, as he put it, was a young kid. When I asked him point blank about it, he was a, I was a young kid. He was in the on-deck circle when Hank Aaron hit number 715. Talk about being a witness to history. That's awesome. But So let me start with something simple, and then we'll go from there. Uh, of course, I do have a Hank Aaron autographed baseball. There it is. PSA authenticated right there. You can look up the serial number. Eh, let me turn that. You can look up the serial number if you want. W B is it W eight six three five four. So if you want to go to PSA and check it out, go ahead. That's my autograph baseball. I also have a Hall of Fame 
uh, postcard autographed by Hank. You can see right there, there it is, Hank's signature. This is this is uh, JSA certified. There's the cert number, JJ99275 for the postcard. And the creme de la creme. I just got this the other day. I was really, 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 really excited about it. And I have to show it off because it's just so freaking cool. And I don't care what anyone says. It's fucking awesome. You don't like it. I don't care. I like it. That's all that really matters. So, you see me struggling a little bit here because you heard that. It's a bat tube. So that means there is a Hank Aaron model bat. A genuine Louisville Slugger Hank Aaron bat. You can see the Hank Aaron 755. Uh, you can't see it that good since it's in plastic. I try to keep it in plastic. But you can see the Hank Aaron 755 logo on there. There's, there's the man's signature right there. Obviously, this is not a game-used bat. And there's the MLB uh, uh, certificate as well. Obviously, it's not a game-used bat. It's too nice a condition to be a game-used bat. But who fucking cares? It's a Hank Aaron bat. Come on. It's fucking Hank Aaron. And that brings me to another point about... I'm going to say about Hank Aaron. A couple things, actually. One, Hank Aaron may have the second coolest stat line in baseball history after uh, Stan Musial's stat line. Stan Musial had... 3,630 hits in his career. 1,815 at home, 1,815 on the road. I think that's one of the coolest stats ever. Another awesome stat that involves Hank. If you subtract Hank Aaron's 755 home runs and basically zeroed out those 755, he still has over 3,000 hits. It's like 3,007, I believe, is the number. By the way, my Hank Aaron celebration shirt, courtesy of the Hall of Fame. Uh, but that's awesome, too. The fact that he got 3,000 hits without... He had 3,000 hits, not including his home runs. The home runs just were on top of everything else. That shows you what a dynamic player he was. He played for two teams in two cities. Could have played in three cities. I am not clear. Uh, Boston Braves moved to Milwaukee, became the Milwaukee Braves. That's where Hank Aaron played for a large bulk of his career. He played in Milwaukee. The Braves moved to Atlanta, I want to say, in 1966. So he spent, I'm going to uh, spitball in it here, 66 through the 74 season with the Atlanta Braves. Still a Brave, but Atlanta instead of Milwaukee. He then went back to Milwaukee in 75 and 76 to finish his career as the DH with a very, 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 very young teenage player on the roster who would go into the Hall of Fame as well. That, of course, being the one and only Robin Yount. Before I go, let me show you one other thing. This is something that I got autographed, but unfortunately not by Hank Aaron. It sucks. I wish I could have. But I have the... The Hall of Fame program from August 1st and 2nd, 1982. The signature you see here is Frank Robinson, who was inducted the same time as Hank Aaron. They were inducted together as the class of 1982. You can see my JSA cert right there. So that's what I wanted to show for today. I thought you'd like it. I thought it was very, very important and time well spent considering what today is the anniversary of. Hope you liked it. If you'd like to see anything else that you think I may have, feel free to shoot me a message, leave a comment, whatever it may be. Thank you much, everyone. Have a great day and aloha.